Hey, Jen. How you doing? Hi, Alex. Thank thanks you. for having me. No, thanks for being on the show. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Is that you in the opening singing? That's my buddy, Charlie. He was on the first show. Oh, cool. He's from a band <laughs> called White Houses. They're awesome. Oh, I'll have to check them out. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was just admiring your uh, art in the background there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, really nice, right? Let me Freestyle. Let see a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, yeah, that's my, my, I have three kids. Mm -hmm. I have an eight-year-old daughter and two sons who are six and two. And we were distance learning here in right. the spring. And my two-year-old drew all over the walls. Whenever mm -hmm. anybody left the pencil down, he grabbed the pencil and drew on the walls. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I think it's kind of funny. I think my distance learning super superpower is that this doesn't really bother me. <laughs> I think it's great. I, I'm going to be honest, like, because I know we had like the little pre-screening <clears throat> last week. And I really yeah. thought it was something at first. So oh, you thought it was art. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I mean, who's to say? Right. It's like that old movie. What was that called? My kid made that or something where the four year old was making paintings and selling them like she was an artist. I've whatever. never seen it. She wasn't, but her parents were. Mm -hmm. And the idea was that sometimes you can't tell. But It's who's to say what's art and yeah. what's not. Right. 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 Yeah. I'm sure he'll add to this in the fall. Yeah. So I even, look forward to better. seeing that. <laughs> Send it to the page so we can get an update. Yeah, I will. Um, so you're speaking of, of kids being home and distance learning and stuff. So why don't we just jump into the voodoo water, learn a okay. little bit about who Jennifer is. Um, and I was listening to a podcast that you had today. First off, you have a podcast called We Built This Life. Do you want yes. to give a little background on that? Sure. So, uh, yeah, the podcast is called We Built This Life. It is uh, I tell stories about entrepreneurs and freelancers and side hustlers and how they built their careers from the ground up. So uh, I started it about probably a little over a year ago now. I only have 10 episodes, so I'm very slow at getting them out. But it, it's so fun. It's so fun to hear people tell you their career stories. And I love the audio format of podcasting where the person I'm interviewing can actually tell you their story. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. So I actually checked out uh, today. I checked out uh, episode eight. I think it was a solo. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it was actually on um, how you're managing your waste. Yes. Um, and stuff, which is really cool. And uh, figuring you got five people and kids count as like two people as far as waste. Right. <laughs> I agree. I think they do. Maybe three. Right. <laughs> so you guys have been crammed together and still trying to pursue artistic uh, endeavors and your actual professional lives and all that stuff, plus having kids and teaching and stuff. So I thought it was pretty cool how you ran through some of the ways you, you cut down waste and stuff. Yeah. I mean, we really tried to work on that. Our, our place is really small. We live mm. in a condo in Baltimore city. It's two bedrooms and it's fine when two kids are at school during the day and my husband's out at work, but when everybody's here, it gets mm -hmm. so tight. Um, so I mean, I guess that's part of the reducing waste thing, but really it's more about like environmentalism and trying to do your sure. part. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot more we could be doing, but I just wanted to share in that episode a few things that we had tried and a few things that I wanted to try. Hopefully it just gives people some ideas. I thought it was great. I like the whole lunchbox, um, the company. Yeah. Well, I, I always yeah. thought, yeah, that's how they used to make lunchboxes, just metal, right? Yeah, and, that's how they used to do it. And these these are uh, called planet boxes, and mm -hmm. I love them. They're so expensive. If you go on and look at the website, they're like $60 or $50 for right. a lunchbox, which is insane. But they last forever, mm -hmm. and they're divided like bento boxes. Um, so you can, you know, kids like to eat like a little bit of like five different things. Right. So yeah. it's set up where you can pack that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that company. They're great. Yeah, but even some like that where it's like just go back to making it the way you used to make it. Right. That's, that's yeah, what just, I thought. Just ditch the brown bag. Yeah, ditch the brown bag and go back yeah. to the Yeah, or no sure. plastic. <laughs> you were talking about how there was a plastic ones you were using, but like it was hard to clean. Um, yeah, yeah. We used to use a different kind and they would get like mold caught in like certain spots and it was mm -hmm. hard to get to it. The, the stainless steel is the best, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are typically uh, like um, you're a journalist, right? Yeah, yeah. For journalist, content writer, kind mm -hmm. of do a little bit of both. And this is a new medium for you over the past year or so, or is this something you've always been interested in? Or Podcasting definitely is. Um, I think I got interested in it because I could, it's kind of like audiobooks. I can listen to mm -hmm. it while doing something else. That's right? what That's I what said. I like about podcasting. Mm -hmm. I can do the dishes, get something else done. Um, 
but like I said, I think I've come to just really like it as a form of storytelling because mm. I, I put a story together like I normally would, only instead of writing a quote that somebody said, it's them telling you, you know, that you yeah. get to actually hear their voice and what they're emphasizing and how they're saying it, which I think is just such an amazing part of the medium. I love your structure too. I mean, I, I feel like now at this point, mm. I'm cheating by just doing it live. It's like, I, this is it. You know, and maybe I'll edit it for YouTube and stuff, but like you have music and like you have them talking and then you'll also cut to you giving background. It's, but it's such like a nice flow. I really appreciate how um, easy it is to uh, digest. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate that. And I think your format is awesome going live Thank you. For, for these shows, but uh, it's different. Yeah. But... I think it, yeah. It's di yeah. Different. It, I haven't seen it before. I like that. Oh, cool. Thank but, you. Um, yeah, I, I think that the format fits my personality. I, mm. you know, I do interviews for work, like when I'm writing stories and I've right. never wanted people to hear the interviews. I don't know. Like, mm. see, this format is probably good for you because I can tell you're really good at conversation and getting that going. Right. I do not feel that that is as much my strength. I can listen to what people are saying mm -hmm. and get the information I need to write a story and ask follow up questions. Right. So if I just go into the podcast interview and think, OK, I'm just collecting the audio and then I can shape it into a story that just makes me feel more comfortable and i feel like it plays to my strengths so a storyteller more, yeah, yeah i think of it like that i love i love it um i liked a couple of them i didn't get to watch all of them there's one in particular really? that um i actually bought this adam e it's the couple oh yeah alan um, boss adam allen boss mm -hmm. and i bought their book and unfortunately it won't be here until the end of the month but i'm, I'm uh, interested in in seeing what he has to say now he's a priest uh, ayahuascan priest shaman is that the well, deal he, he had some involvement in ayahuasca i talked mm. to him probably over a year ago now and he doesn't anymore he's an astrologer okay so uh he talks a little bit in the episode about what that means mm -hmm. and uh says it way better than i would ever be able to say it but what was cool about having him as, as a guest is astrology isn't something that i'm familiar with at all Right. So it was nice just to have him come on and explain that it's so much more than like opening a magazine and reading a horoscope. Mm -hmm. There is a lot more intricacies that go into it. Uh, I've gotten really good feedback on that episode. So I loved maybe it. other people are interested. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you, Alex. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. It was It really, um, I'm happy I selected that one. For some reason, it just stood out um, and it wasn't what I was expecting. And I purposely didn't finish it because I want to talk to you a little bit about it. Um, yeah. I, I, I just, uh, you're very fortunate to, to have had these conversations, right? I feel like I get, yeah. that's how I feel when I get to have conversations with people like you. It's like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm learning. It's a, there's another creative person there. That's, you're, you're kind of on the other end of it, of podcasting, yeah. I guess. So it's, it's cool. It's really nice. I always, feel, uh, I always feel kind of honored that people give me their time and mm -hmm. are willing to open up a little bit and share a little bit of their lives for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and especially being a new podcaster, there's not a lot I can offer back in terms of like a big following or anything. Right. So I think that makes me even more appreciative that they were willing to, to come on and talk. No, definitely. And I'm in the same boat. Um, yeah. But hey, you got one book sale. I don't, I'm sure there's oh. more than that. So <laughs> you're definitely helping. Oh, good. Yeah. I just had somebody um, send me a message today. Well, this wasn't in relation to the podcast, but mm -hmm. a friend of mine started a new business where she's putting together these art boxes and I would shared it on Instagram and the person said that they followed her and were thinking of buying her stuff. That's really cool when you can play like a really small part in like helping people with their yeah. businesses. It's like I, I was saying a little bit earlier, it's like, and people have heard me say it, they're probably tired of me saying it. But I, you know, I'm selfish when I have these conversations, like I'm selective who I want to get on the show. Cause it's like, you've piqued my interest. And now this is just a conversation that yeah. I get to have. Um, yeah. I also get to be creative, uh, with how the production is and people seem to enjoy it. So, I mean, it's like a win, win, win. Yeah. How did, am I, am I allowed to ask you questions too? Or of course. This is a, this is a conversation. It's not an interview. Oh, okay. Back and forth. So how did you decide on your format? How did you decide to go live on Facebook? Oh, you know, um, I'd been doing this since maybe April and I asked, I actually work for like a leading distributor in like video editing, hardware and software. So there's people that are very knowledgeable in my company about it. And, um, I don't know. I wanted to start playing my bass live and mm someone suggested using this program OBS. So I did. And then I had to get an interface, you know, to 
hook up the bass and stuff. And then I'm doing it, and then there was latency, so I started learning about and then I wanted the camera to be better. And then I sat, sat there and was like, well, I could do this with video games, All right? I like video games, let me do that. So I started doing Twitch. And then I was like, but you know, I really have been really digging receiving my information through podcast. I really like that medium. Like you said, the dishes and you know, I like driving. It's like something I could put on, listen to a half an hour, turn it off. It's kind of like a book. You just keep picking up whenever it's around. Yeah. Um, and then I just decided to start doing a podcast. I don't know. It's always been a thing that I want to do in some form. Yeah. And it just kind of, it's just kind of progressed um, with a lot of money <laughs> invested <laughs> But a lot of time, too, to learn. And it was like, you know, this is like such a passion at this point, you know, and having the commitment to do something weekly yeah. is, you know, um, as you know, like you talked a little bit in your the, in the prelude to the episode eight that you did. You talked about how you're only trying to do about two because you feel like maybe if you pre-record four of them, it's now it's outdated or whatever it is. Like there's a yeah. there's a lot that goes into the production. There really is. I think people don't realize that sometimes, but I'm so impressed with anybody who can put something out every week. I think every episode probably takes me, I don't know, 25 hours to put together or something, which yeah. sounds insane because it's half an hour long. Like you would never think it would take that's that much time. hours. I'm does. sure you do the conversation for two hours and then you have to look stuff up. And yeah. It's just, I mean, maybe I'll get faster at it as, as I keep doing it, but yeah. I think you're right too. It's, it's also a passion project, mm -hmm. especially because you have to invest the money. This is my third microphone. I have a 10 oh, episode no. podcast, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is insane. Mm. My last one broke. Mm -hmm. The one before that was, uh, I had this expensive headset that okay. had like a mic attached to it and you plugged it into a mixer and it just mm. always, um, echoed. Like I couldn't get the sound right. Oh, it was like it. picking um, up. Yeah, I was mm. picking up something else. And I was recording in my closet, too, in the beginning, because that's what podcasters do, right? They go and they record in their closet to get better sound. I but, guess, uh, yeah. You I, could do I, that. I had, uh, it, it never worked with that first mic. So anyway, mm. yeah, it's definitely a passion project for me, which is shown by how much I've invested in all of these microphones. Yeah, no, it's but <laughs> and people don't and it's not really for people to understand that. That's kind of like a little thing. We're like in a club. You know, yeah. it's like, we know what it is, That's right. you know, and I guess part of the magic too is, you know, it seems seamless. It should, it should seem effortless, you know? Right. That's true. It should, it should seem like it didn't take any time at all. It's the same thing with writing too. When you're reading a story, it should mm -hmm. seem like, you know, it, there's nothing to it, but it probably took the writer, I, you know, 20, mm -hmm. 10, 20 drafts to put it together. So. Yeah. Uh, audio books has been a cool thing for me. Um, I've definitely jumped on that bandwagon. Yeah, it's funny. I mentioned audiobooks. I've never listened to an audiobook. What? <laughs> but I've never listened to one before. Okay. I should though. Mm -hmm. I totally should. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just haven't um, well, tried it out. So. I, I I've listened to like some fan fiction stuff. I like Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, so I I picked up a book about a character, or whatever, some side stuff, and it was a nice, easy, fun read. There was sound effects and stuff. It was cool. But then yeah. I got another book because there's a Long Island author that I want to get on the show um, because he does a lot of history stuff. But it's called Washington Spies. I, mm. I don't think I can sit there and listen to it. I might have to actually buy it and read it because it's not that type of book. So mm. I'm learning that for me personally, some things just don't translate well aud audibly. Yeah, I can see that. So a history book, yeah, I could see how you might want to have that in front of you. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to sure. have to get it and read it because there's just a lot coming at you. And, like, they'll read letters written in Old English, and you're like, oh, wait, 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 go back, <laughs> you know. I need to see this. I need to see it in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. you got a lot of production value in, in, in your shows. So 25 hours makes sense to me. Yeah, I guess. When I was first starting this, I took a podcasting class and really? the person in it. Yeah, I was a terrible student. Mm. I did. A, it was like a six month class and you were supposed to come online twice a week and talk to the other people in the class. I don't think I ever got on once. It just oh. didn't work out with the okay. kids. Mm -hmm. um, but but actually, the way I format my podcast is because that I did get on one time. And the one time I got on, the, the teacher format. gave me an idea that helped me figure out the format. So that kind of made it all worth it. It was meant to but, be. 
Yeah, it was meant to be. But the person, one of the classmates that I had was talking about it took her 18 hours to edit her episode. And I was thinking, that's insane. This is going to take like two hours and I'll be done. I just can't even imagine that. But mm -hmm. she was right. That's how long it takes. <laughs> I mean, even me, I res every, I, yeah, I res everything in like 4K, even though it gets yeah. compressed down and I only shoot in 1080p. I just, it's better. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that is a pain in the ass too, especially since like I can do other stuff with this computer. Like I can pretty much do whatever I wanted to, but to have something going for three hours, like, okay, uh, I'll start at nine o'clock and then maybe I'll wake up and go shut the computer down or whatever, you know, when it's done yeah. that kind yeah. of stuff. But it's like even editing out, um, just like music for like copyright infringement. Cause I'll have like artists on that will play their music live, which is fine, mm -hmm. but I can't upload it to YouTube that way. Mm. It takes so there's a, a lot involved on the technical side with, mm -hmm. with, uh, with what you do. I mean, you're saying yeah. things that I, I don't know what 1080p is. Like oh, sorry. It's just a res yeah, yeah, it's just a resolution of the video. Yeah, but that's that's awesome that you mm. kind of have learned all that. And I'm trying you know, I'm really impressed by that. I think that my podcast is like super it's pretty low tech. I plug the mic into the mm -hmm. computer and put on the headphones and I interview people through Zencaster which is, uh, you know, just mm -hmm. online. And, and it splits um, up the audio for you and everything. Yeah, and it mm. separates it. So like I, my audio is like one track and their audio is one track. So mm -hmm. that kind of works for the format of my podcast. Everything yeah. isn't all meshed together. Um, and then I edit in Audacity and that's, you know, that's it. pretty much it. Like I, it works, there's it really like a, you don't need to know much technically if mm -hmm. for anybody who wants to start a podcast, I think it's pretty easy to, to get into it. Oh, for sure. I, there's a guy, Mike Falzone. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He's a comedian. Mm -hmm. He got a lot of attention for making these daily videos where he would walk through his neighborhood, kind of like point of view of his camera yeah. and answer oh. people's questions. And be That's kind of funny cool. about it, but yet still like grounded in some like advice, you know? Yeah. But uh, that was probably pretty low tech for him, right? It was just his well, camera phone. He, was he using? came out of a video because everybody kept bugging him about it. And he was like, here's my smartphone. And he put it on the table and he was like, I hit record. Now you have a podcast. And it was like, he was like, <laughs> that's it. That's all you got to do. You know, and it made a lot of sense. Yeah. On my, um, on episode three of the podcast, I interviewed, um, a woman, her name is Mercedes Lyson and mm. she's really interesting. She has a PhD in sociology and she has actually transitioned into being a beauty journalist. Oh, cool. And, uh, she was talking about how she made her first uh, YouTube video. And she said, she thinks it was just like an iPhone four propped up on a box. And that, sure. that was really all she needed to get started. I think she has a lot more equipment now I, because yeah, it's yeah, her yeah. business. You have but, to. Yeah, but when you're starting out, you can really like you can get it mm -hmm. going for like a minimal amount of money and yeah, I have an issue. Technology. Yeah, I just have an issue where it's like I was in the music industry, I guess. I've been doing yeah. a lot of quotes. I don't know why I keep quoting things. I never quote things. I'm gonna just <laughs> off screen quote. Um, I was in the music industry and it was like, no, I need to get like the best gear I can get, and I just had the mentality of like, if you just don't get it to begin with you're going to be buying it three times, like kind of how you bought a mic three times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I jumped into this, it was like, I'm not doing anything unless it's like, it's already started at a good point of yeah. quality wise. I don't yeah. know why. I feel like it's impactful. Yeah. I, I mean, I get that side of it too. Cause you're right. You know, if, if you, you know, cheap out in the beginning, something's going to break and mm -hmm. you're just going to have to replace it. Um, that kind of goes along with the waste thing that I was talking about, right? Then it's yeah, just going to create you're kind of just waste. So sometimes it does make sense to invest, especially if you know you're going to stick with it. It seems like you're really committed to this. You yeah. have this weekly, you know, um, live going. Mm -hmm. So then it's worth it for sure. Yeah. Um, and I've been trying to recycle my, I guess, so to speak, my equipment by giving it out. If I don't need it anymore, I just give it to somebody. Now, I'm not saying I'm giving That's them, yeah. you know, $500 mixer, but... <laughs> An old headset, kind of like you had. I gave it yeah. to someone that needed a headset. No problem. Here you go. Yeah, that's a good idea. I thought about mm. doing that. But I thought, well, if my kids get into gaming at some point, maybe they'll want to have that. Yeah. So I'll probably just keep it around just in case. Yeah. I made a couple mistakes. I bought some really cheap lights, and they would, like, um, cause interface. They would cause ish audio issues because they weren't grounded properly. Really? You could sucks. hear something mm -hmm. from, like, a buzzing A or buzzing, something? yeah. Oh, wow. Huh. So it's like the one time I was like, oh, I'll just get these lights. I don't care. 
Well, God, who would think of that beforehand, that your lights would be buzzing and the audio would pick it up? It's mm -hmm. amazing what these microphones can pick up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Now, that's a USB mic? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, oh, the one I have? Yeah, it's a USB. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about getting XLR? I, I haven't. I don't even know what that means or what, Never mind. <laughs> what the difference is. <laughs> Never mind. It's okay. I don't think you really need to change much. But a question yeah. I did have for you, would you ever consider moving to a like a, um, a visual format with it or? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I have been nervous about being on the screen for mm -hmm. sure. I think being on your show is awesome because it's a really good way to kind of like try cool. that out. Well, no one can tell. Do with it. If you're nervous, we can't tell. <laughs> oh, good, good. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe in the future, who knows? I mean, mm -hmm. a, lot of, uh, a lot of, wait, let me back up and collect mm -hmm. this slide. So a lot of uh, the reason that I started the podcast from a practical standpoint is that I think that when you're thinking of like jobs, so right now I freelance and I'm at home with the kids, but when my youngest kid goes to school, I might have to go back and find something, you know, right. kind of regular. And that's hard for people who have stayed home for a long time. So I read like job descriptions every now and then. And I think in the writing world, people seem to want you to know how to create stories in different ways. And video right. is one of those ways. So mm -hmm. I, you, know, you never know, maybe eventually I will get into okay. that. Okay. I think it would be a cool little component. Um, I think what would be cool too is maybe video showing what you're doing. Yeah. Like, like when your I'm your process and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that being cool. Like a sped up video too. Sometimes people do those sped up Time videos. Time lapse, the whole sure. A little commentary yeah. like, well, this is how I get my audio, you know, and I'm going to go sit yeah. down. I don't know. Behind the scenes That would be thing. really cool. I, I, have, I would have to research how to do that, but my, I, I like that idea for sure. My advice to everybody is to be diversified, which is something I've been trying to do. It's just been so crazy busy. I have the, you know, it's such an excuse, but it's been really crazy busy, but to device, diversify like what you're doing on what platform, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, they say that in writing all the time to kind of have your hand in a lot of different things that that is. Because kind of it turns the wheel and brings different groups of people in that you might not have got before, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's a good point because people are attracted to different things. Um, sure. I'll have to think about that because, yeah, there are a lot of people who are drawn to video. Yeah, there's something about it. But even like there's podcasts that are video only. I'm pretty sure that I watch, but I just yeah. listen to it. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's like even if you just you just reach another audience having on YouTube or something. Yeah, now, that's a cool way to think about it. Then you have the option. You're really doing mm -hmm. it one time. But then if you like the audio, you have that. If you like the video, you have that. Yeah. I mean, YouTube is like the world's biggest search engine. Is it? I'm not yeah. that surprised about that. I use YouTube a lot. That doesn't surprise it's me. It's like, what do you do? It's like, it's even when you type something into Google, what pops up? A YouTube video, right? Yeah, that's true. Always, yeah, yeah. always in the front. Do you put all of these, do you put all of your interviews <clears throat> on YouTube? Yeah. So I just started maybe episode 12. So this is episode 15. Yeah. I have one ready to upload that will probably go up Monday and then yours will come up next week oh, nice. and then okay. people can go back and i try to edit it a little bit because it is you don't want to sit through a live kind of show when it's not really live you kind yeah. of lose the fun factor about it yeah i get that yeah, there's yeah. probably some things that you could take out yeah so you just chop it up a little bit and send it out but i try to leave it but i'm trying to do other stuff on youtube um but i just yeah. i just haven't i don't know Hasn't hit what me yet. What else do you want to do on YouTube? Just like maybe uh, gear reviews, uh, break down some of the equipment I use, mm -hmm. uh, commentary. I have one video about my experience with Ultimum, which is horrible. I went with Verizon. They've been great. J Verizon. Yay, Verizon. I have yeah. Verizon. Ultimum is a cell phone provider? I don't know. They, they masquerade as if they're a, um internet. Oh, okay. provider. I have never heard of them. I don't think we have them. In, uh, yeah, you in might Maryland. not. They're like, um, they were bought by Atlas, I think. But they're like a New York based company and it shows. It's no good. Uh. <laughs> I like Verizon. They've been great. I have like a gigabyte yeah. upload and download. So yeah no i issues. like the idea of uh, on youtube doing um gear reviews and showing your equipment i thought those would be really popular i well, watch a lot of those the, like how to kind of things exactly and, yeah. i mean that's how i bought every piece of equipment 
Yeah, right. So, you, do the you watch the review first to see what people think. Mm -hmm. about. So I think I'd be fine with it. Uh, I can give practical information on it too because I know some people just get it, unbox it, and they say, well, this is what it's supposed to do, but they don't really know. So I feel right. like I'd be, I would only really want to do it with stuff that I use, but. Yeah, it's, you could actually review it. You'd have like a leg up for sure. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the trick is staying on top of trends and grabbing something that no one else is reviewing. Mm. Yeah, I can see that because then everybody's going to search for it and they're not going to find anybody else who's and done that. And hopefully they hit the channel, right? Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. they get to know you. I, I think that would be smart. <laughs> yeah. Now on your, you have 10 episodes up or 11? I have 10. 10. I just finished editing my 11th one. So cool. that'll go up soon. A little sneak peek. What do we got? Do you want to yeah, say? Yeah, it's just that it's kind of like a celebration of finishing 10 episodes and sticking with us for a year. It's 10 mm -hmm. lessons learned from a year of podcasting. So it's a solo episode. That's awesome. And yeah, if you've never listened to the show before, it's kind of a little sneak peek into who's been on the show and mm -hmm. some of the lessons that I've you know, kind of gleaned from having them on. So I did six lessons that were uh, really stuck out to me from the people who have been on and then four lessons that... I have learned just being a new podcaster. So right. it relates to podcasting, but I think it could apply to anybody starting something new. Like uh, uh, as far as this medium or just as you mean startup as, in general? Uh, more just like starting something new. Like I had a little bit where I talked about, you know, kind of the rejection piece that can come when mm, you start something new and course. how I dealt with that. Um, I talked a little bit about how I have thought about organizing the podcast, um, based on like my schedule and the amount of time I have. So I think kind of the gold standard for podcasting is a weekly episode, but yeah. I, I just, am never going to hit that. I'm just, I, I just am not You're working... for something that's a creative project. Mm -hmm. You're so working thought, within what you can do. Yeah. But I do want more consistency. You know, I'm just releasing episodes kind of whenever it would be nice to have some consistency. Right. So I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just try to do an episode a month. I know that's not a, a lot, but if I could consistently do it, say the first or the second Tuesday of every month, yeah. that would be a start. And then maybe I can go. From you there. can work in more episodes as you go. I think that's a good idea. Right. So yeah. Yeah. My husband had said that to me in the beginning. Why don't you do an episode a month? And I was like, oh, no, I can't. I can't do that. Can't That's do nothing. That. Nobody's going to listen. But I think he was right. I should have listened. <laughs> I mean, you're on multiple sites. Or you just stream strictly from your website. I have it on my website. Mm -hmm. And then it's on um, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, okay. Google Podcasts, I think it's called now. There's some others I can probably upload the podcast onto. Um, but those are the four that I have it on at the moment. Very cool. Um, so can you give us your top three tips for people starting up a business or new project um, based off of your experience interviewing people doing successful startups? Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, let's see. So I, on episode seven, I had on Amy Homan, who is a sustainable and ethical clothing designer. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you a little bit of her story to get sure. to the lesson, but she, um, she had a Kickstarter campaign to raise money for her clothing line. And she mm. had three pieces of clothing and her goal was at 20,000 or 25,000 that she would raise from Kickstarter to produce these items of clothing. And she didn't need it. She came in under that. And so mm. she was at this point where she kind of had to decide, am I going to stick with this? Like, it was like a soul searching moment. What am I going to do next? And she said, somebody gave her the advice that sometimes you just need to make a little tweak in your business and everything kind of falls into place. Mm. So for her, she had really wanted to produce her clothing in the United States and she shifted her thinking and decided to work with an international partner. Okay. Um, and it, she was working with a company in the Philippines at the time. I think that has since changed, mm. but uh, it was a company that still had her standards of sustainability and environmentalism, but the cost wasn't as high and it allowed right. her to keep going with her business. And then she came up with this, um, essentials line that she was selling. She has a whole bunch of new things coming out in September. So um, yeah, if you hit a roadblock, make a small tweak. Think about what small tweak you can make before mm. giving up. And that might be what you need for everything to fall into place. Right. Um, like if you're giving so many tools and you don't have the yeah. tool you want, but there's another one available. Yeah, right. Like maybe you don't have to like make such a big drastic change or give everything up and go in a total different mm -hmm. direction. Maybe it's just something small that would help you move forward. So you just, adapt. Yeah, adapt. And because in her case, she's trying to start up her business. And I think you're just trying to, you know, move forward in it. Right. So yeah. she's just. I like, 
the goal of the every having everything made in America, I guess, was the goal. Yes, but it it's was. expensive, right? It was yeah. more expensive, and she found that being um, like a small producer, it was hard to right to cover to the cost the minimums to mm-hmm. cover the cost, right? Yeah. So that was one. A lesson that really stuck out to me, and this might more apply to parents who are, you know, kind of the primary person with the kids kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But um, on episode 10, I had on Ashley Becker. She has a company called Sayla Designs. It's a nonprofit jewelry company. I listened to that one. Did you? Yeah, oh, yeah. thanks. Thanks for checking it out. But she had said that uh, her business was really hard for her to build in the beginning because her kids were young. And she had to work in these like tiny chunks of time. Right. Like she would need to do like a photo shoot for some of her items and it would take three weeks to do it because mm-hmm. she only had nap time to do it. But she persisted and has built her company into something she's really proud of now. So that really stuck out to me because there have been times when I have thought about giving up on the podcast. You know, maybe I just don't have time to do it. But just hearing somebody say, no, use the, use the chunks of time you have, even right. if it's only a little bit and it takes you longer to get to where you want to be, uh, it's you will still get there eventually if you just like are persistent. It just might take longer. Yeah, it's it's almost like. I, I, again, people don't realize how tough it can be not to sound like a martyr or on a soapbox, but it's like that time that you just want to relax because maybe the kids are asleep or they're out on a play date or whatever. That's when you have to spring into action and do the work. Yeah. Like yeah. Nonstop. And I, right. And I never really wanted to give it up because I love it, mm-hmm. but there's, you know, you have those moments where you think, oh, you know, I don't just want to sit on the couch. Yeah, mm-hmm. you want to sit on the couch. You just want to. I, I was binge watching Glee for like a while when I should have been like working on the episodes, you know, mm-hmm. s- stuff like that. But um, yeah, that for me, that was probably the most valuable thing to hear is to and just then, work within the schedule that you have. Yeah, yeah. So be, then, uh, be adaptable. As being far adaptable, as right? Mm-hmm. Being adaptable. That's what seems it like is. a maybe theme. You can't work nine to five, but mm-hmm. maybe you know, for her, she like during distance learning time, she was getting up early in the morning and putting in a few hours before her kids woke up. Right. You know, just uh, you probably do have time to work on it. It just might not look like you know the traditional way people work. Like I do right. a lot of work at night, you know, editing yeah. and stuff. But... You you mentioned that in episode ten. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like I don't know, my kids often aren't in bed until 10, but maybe like 10 to midnight, I might mm-hmm. work on something, um, you know, not every night, but. But if maybe you just yeah. get some in, inspiration hits you. Right, exactly. You work on it a little bit and you just chip away. Chip yeah, yeah, away yeah. Your goals for mm-hmm. sure. And then the biggest lesson for number three, I'm going to tell you a lesson that I've learned for myself, uh, being a writer and a podcaster. And it's kind of about the, the whole rejection thing and not taking things personally. Mm-hmm. Um, so just how that relates to podcasting, I don't know if you've experienced this, but when you're, you're reaching out for guests, you get a lot of different responses, especially when you're new, mm-hmm. you might not get a response or you might get a response and somebody might be interested and then um, you might not hear from them again, or you get a yes, right? It's like all these different responses. But right. I think when you're starting something new, you can be derailed by, you know, a rejection. No. Yeah. Luckily I have a freelancing background and that's a lot of what freelancing is. So I have that to like that's roll good. on. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, I think I've learned just to like not take things personally. You know, people yeah. people are busy, they have other things going on, you know, maybe they're not interested in what you do, maybe it's not the right fit for them. That's fine. You're looking for the people who are a right fit, right? Exactly. There are going to be people who are going to be interested. Well, you want so you people to be to- excited. You want people to be excited, right? You want people who want to come on and, um, and everybody and for specifically for podcasting, I really think everybody has a story. I really do. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a story. To I tell. agree. And you, and there's so many people in the world. So mm-hmm. you just kind of need to keep going. And something I've done too, is I, um, every time I've gotten a positive review, some of the people I've had on the show have said really nice things about their episodes. I save that and I read through that. It's a little mm-hmm. confidence boost. Right. Um, so go so, back. Yeah, so just, positive yeah. affirmation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just just try not to take things personally. You got to let it bounce off and just keep going. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, for the podcast, I get I mainly get yeses or, no, that's I, good. or I get nothing back. But I haven't been <laughs> flat out told no, but I'd rather be told no. Yeah. But the thing is, I am very selective about who I want on the show. So yeah. it's like. 
uh, I'm pretty confident when I ask someone if they're going to be on the show that it, they're either going to be all about it or they're not, which is fine. But like most people are pretty excited to get on it. And yeah. those are the people that I want, right? Uh, right. You want people to be excited for sure. I, I try wanna... to reach out to people who I have like some experience with. Like mm -hmm. this dress I'm wearing is Amy's dress from episode seven. You know, I try oh, to cool. reach out to people like I use their products or I watch their content That's awesome. or whatever. Yeah. It makes the emails like a little bit more personal. Um, I've never gotten a flat out no either. It usually is yeah. just a, you know, you stop responding, which is, that happens in freelancing too. You yeah. send out pitches for story ideas and you get all of those responses too. Sure. So, but I won't reach window. back out though. That's my thing. It's just, okay. And I just keep it moving. Yeah, I usually do too. Every once mm. in a while, if I really want that person on, I'll send a second email or sure. if they've shown interest and when I tried to set up a time, I didn't get a response. I might just try one more time. Right. Just to, you know, in case the email got lost or something, yeah, but yeah, then yeah. I let it go. When it's a flat out ignore, then that's fine. Yeah, you just, then you just kind of go on to the next person and. That's it. You just keep, right. you just keep it moving. Keep, moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. keep it moving. <laughs> um, what was I going to ask you? I had a good question. Mm. Oh, I don't know. This happens. I know. It happens to me sometimes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we, oh, so you keep using the word distance learning? The phrase distance. Oh, yeah. Is that something that, uh, like schools? Or is that terminology is. they use? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it is. Um, so, because the schools aren't in session because right. of COVID, the kids are learning at home. So, mm. I don't, uh, I don't know what they're doing in New York, but in, in Maryland, we're continuing that into the fall. So, I think it'll look different. I think the kids will maybe, I, I don't know for sure yet, but we'll mm. go online with their teachers for a certain right. amount of time. And then we'll complete work on their own for a certain amount of time, but they're not going to school at all, at least through yeah. mid-October in, hmm. in the district that we're in. So I've had a couple of our teachers on, you know, Chrissy, obviously. I do, yeah, my brother-in-law. Good, good guy. <laughs> awesome guy. <laughs> um, also, uh, C4 from a band called Flak Jacket. Um, mm -hmm. He's actually an art teacher. I didn't know that either. And he was saying that they're going to be going back to school in the fall. Oh, they are. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's different. It's different everywhere. I know some people are yeah, in school, I don't really some know. people are in two days a week and you know, the districts around us are closed until the end of December, early January. Mm -hmm. um, for us, it's just mid October. I would imagine it, it's going to go further than that, but I, you know, I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. I don't have children. So like, it's not on the top of my brain, but um, that's why next week we have Gary Patan on who is the owner of videoguys.com. They've sponsored a channel before, but he's also been a part of, you know, education boards and stuff. Really smart guy. So next week we'll be talking all about that kind of aspect because I don't really know. And I don't yeah, really trust yeah. what I hear from anywhere these days. Yeah, it's nice to yeah. get um, some perspective from people who are on the other side of it. Like you said, you've had Chris mm -hmm. on and teachers and, you know, people who are on the administration side of it. Um, yeah. I imagine it's really hard for teachers right now. They were in, in March yeah. for us. It was like on, a, on March 12th or something. They decided they were going to close for two weeks and then it just kept extending. So teachers were really thrown into having to learn how to teach online when they never had to before. I imagine that was just such a big challenge. And some people yeah. are very adaptive. It looks yeah. like Chris was very adaptive to it. And he's actually, for what he told me, he's like kind of setting it up. So that he can do that at any time, work remotely and be able to teach. Oh, that's cool. Which yeah, you cool. wonder what it's going to look like after this is all over. Like yeah. how much is going to move online after, you know, we know now that it can be done. Uh, there could definitely be some wild conspiracy theories uh, thrown <laughs> around. You know, they're, they're basically banning live music. Oh, really? Yeah, in New York, um, apparently you can't advertise live music and you can't take tickets. Wow, because they don't want all the people gathering. Yeah, it, they actually use the phrase like a, a accidental show or accidental musician. Some some weird accident. Like it has to be an accident that it happened. It can't be the main reason. Oh, it's very like you're weird. just playing music and a bunch of people show up, but it wasn't. It's very weird yet. that, yeah, that you would take away the creative. Like, tr I don't know. To me, it's weird. I think you, there's alternatives. Like, I, there's a lot of really cool um businesses here bars that have been prominent in the music scene like mr beery's is a place near me um to combat this thing they first off they completely scrubbed and redid the whole place while it was closed which is awesome wow. and he, they documented it 
they go live all the time. This guy, Mr. Beery, you know, the owner. Um, and then they were live streaming bands inside and letting projecting it outside. So you could buy your drinks, hang mm-hmm. out outside. The band was inside. It was all socially distant. You know, or watch it on That's Facebook. A good way to do it. Yeah, it, it still worked with everybody being outside. Was everybody close together, or did you spread have to, out? Like, spread out. Mm-hmm. It's socially distant. Yeah. You know, yeah. whatever. It's 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 distant, but people still need a place to go. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, it's hard, especially in the beginning of all this when mm-hmm. the, it was really locked down. Um, you know, we don't really go out at night too much because of the kids. Sure. Um, But like, even like the summer, like having our local pool open up just to have a place to take everybody. Sure. You know, in the spring, you couldn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of projecting the, the, what the um, bar did, like Mr. Beery's band play inside Mr. Beery's and projecting outside. That's a good idea. I thought it was smart. I didn't make it down there. I I don't have time to be honest. I I've, I've gone a couple of days, gone out to this place and that place, but it's always been this weird thing for me where you like you wear the mask and you take the mask off and then people are walking up to you a mask yeah uh, it's just weird and i work yeah. a lot so it's like do i really want to spend my time feeling uncomfortable mm. yeah, yeah you gotta weigh it you gotta yeah weigh it. and now that there's no live music it's like i pfft, you know you're probably not going to catch me out anywhere yeah i wonder when that is going to change I feel like it's going to be a little while. Is that how you feel? Yeah, I feel like I've been saying it from the beginning. Like people are like, oh, it's only going to be a month or two. And I'm like, I don't think so. I think this is going to progress into a lot of different areas in our life. And I'm not saying I want to be a conspiracy theorist or anything or that I'm. But, you know, it makes you wonder, like the progression of things. You look at George Orwell's literature and stuff. And I'm not saying that that's what is (laughs) happening, but. There is a progression. It's like, who's checking these things? Mm-hmm. You know, who's it's checking like the, like who's checking what? Like what the, legislative um, actions are being taken? Uh, and is it completely found in science? Is it just because someone has power now and they feel like, you know, who knows what it could yeah. be? Is yeah, it factually? I mean, I mm-hmm. And everybody's doing different things. You know, there's like, you yeah. know, in Baltimore, um, like we wear masks most of the time when we go out mm-hmm. um, and we're going to be around people. I think, I'm not sure if it still is, but I think it still is. I think it's, I think you're required to wear a mask. I think you city. have to wear anybody a... over two. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's nationwide. You have to, don't you? What's that? Isn't that nationwide? That... I I thought that people were doing it by district, but I mean, maybe uh, that would be, maybe uh, that see, that doesn't sense. make sense to me. If it's really that big of a deal, then why, then why isn't everybody just following the same? Yeah. Rules? You would think, I, don't, I, I don't mean, know. maybe because the spread is different in different areas, I guess. I don't know. Um, this whole thing boggles my mind. Yeah. A blanket um, rule would probably be easier, but yeah. like, uh, you know, in Georgia, I think they tried to have, this was a while ago now, mm. tried to have a mask mandate um, in Atlanta and the governor was suing the mayor or something. Look, I mean, look yeah. that up for accuracy, but it mm-hmm. was something like that. I know what you're talking about. There's a lot of places in the South where like, well, we don't have any cases like you do up North. So we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. And now look, like, you know, New York got really bad, but we did everything we could do. You know, and now the South has broke out in these crazy numbers it's like yeah new york's in a pretty good place now right yeah because everybody from what i i mean from my personal experience there's like there's one guy at the place i dropped my my laundry off who's just like you could just tell he's like oh you don't even want to be his neighbor no mask never a mask doesn't care stares you right in the eyes like like you know like go ahead say something it's like all right man get away from me but um you know for the most part i see everybody doing the right thing yeah, I see it. Uh, I do too. I see it a lot more like in the city. I, there's been a lot more wet mask wearing for sure. And um, I think people are trying to keep the distance and all. So Yeah, I'm just worried it's going to be, become too normal because you're the reason why I asked you keep using uh, distance learning. It's like these are just now common things that we're saying. Like everything's distance and social safe, or, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's true. It just rolls mm-hmm. off my tongue like nothing. Distance learning again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know what it's going to look like when it's all over. I don't know when it's going to end. I can only see until December. 
I can't, yeah. if this continues into January, I, it I don't feels know. like a long time. I mean, it might, but I'm just chugging along to December. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. I like to take it a day at a time. Yeah, that's even better. One day at a time. So through your podcast, have you reached out to anybody that maybe has the opposite of success right now during this time? Maybe they're, they're trying to fighting to keep a business going or maybe they've lost. Mm, I mean, I wouldn't say necessarily the opposite of success. I don't think that that's how they would word it, but like right, in the I, episode that you listened to with Adam and Ashley, like mm -hmm. they had a yoga business that they decided to, to let go of. And I think, um, I think it was not making them a lot of money because mm -hmm. they believed in people paying what they could pay. But also they decided that it was just taking up a lot of their time and they had yeah. kids so sort of for a quality of life reason they ended up letting go of that. So mm. there are kind of stories like that. And I talked about Amy who had the Kickstarter campaign that, that didn't she had to um, change her. go the way she wanted. Um, she actually talked about money more than anybody else and how that has been a struggle. Yeah. How they live on 40,000 a year and um, you know, she wants her business to end up like making money eventually how it was. And I talked to her a year ago, it might be different now, but mm. how it was, you know, maybe sort of breaking even or not pulling in as much as she would hope. She's, she's probably the biggest example of somebody who, um, is still like, uh, figuring things out, but, right. um, but I think she has a lot of exciting stuff coming up. I really like her clothes. Cool. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping she has big, big success. Right. Um, so that's another thing too. Like where, in your experience interviewing these entrepreneurs and stuff, where, where do they get this money from? Like, is this something they saved up for years and they had a thought is it yeah. people taking out these crazy loans? Like what, and what do most people do? I yeah, don't know if they talk to you. That's a really good point, Alex, because I have never asked anybody about money and I probably right. should. I mm. get part of it is probably just shying away from that because some people don't like to talk about it's kind money of rude. And, I know. And part of it is just thinking, well, maybe if it's a part of their story, it'll naturally come up in yeah. conversation. And it doesn't. Um, yeah, I guess I'm trying to think back to everybody I've talked to. I mean, like in some cases, like um, Ashley Shelley Trotier in episode four, she has a planning company. She worked full time until mm -hmm. she was making enough money from her. She just designs planners and notebooks and things like that. I was listening was to enough, that today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until she was making enough money from that where she felt like she could transfer over to that being her full time business. So right. I would say that some people go that route. Um. I can't think of uh, having talked to anybody who in who talked about having to invest a lot up front or take out loans or borrow yeah. money. Though you would think that might be the case. I I just didn't ask. Sure, I don't know. I it, like some of my guests. I never ask what their job is because I feel like yeah. it's just a little rude. But I I don't think it is. Right. Yeah, I, I think you could ask somebody what their job is. I yeah, think that's okay. But it's like the same thing with the money thing. It's like, well, where'd you get the money for this? It's like, oh. Well. <laughs> the hell that feels a little like i mean but pe yeah. i mean i you know you can always ask the question and they can say i don't want to talk about it so maybe sure. it's something i should be asking and then you just go on to the next thing. see it's hard for me because i have to kind of be careful about what i ask because there's no yeah, edit button I, while we're live oh that's true <laughs> so i don't <laughs> want to end up with someone being like i don't want to talk about it but Oh, <laughs> like, all right, dude, let's, you know, that's a good point. I asked the question and nobody ever knows, but you're right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be online and everybody's going to see it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, maybe you ask them beforehand. Hey, you mind if I ask you what your job is and then they tell you, and then, you know, well, you can ask on air. my disclaimer is that when we do the pre-screening, I say, is there anything you don't want to talk about? Yeah. I remember, and if yeah. someone's like, don't talk about anything. And I've actually had one person, um, I'm glad I kind of asked him again. Because then they did have stuff. They're like, oh, actually, I don't really want to talk about this and that. And I was like, oh, okay. Not a problem. But if I never said anything, they might have came up. Yeah. Because I was you know. going to ask about something. And yeah. That's a good thing to ask. I, I ask that too. Mm -hmm. yeah, usually in an email, I'll say, if there's anything you don't want to talk about, just let me know. Yeah. We won't, we won't go there. Mm -hmm. So you actually shared some photos with us. Do you want to get into some of these things? Here? Sure. Yeah. I shared some writing photos. I should have mm. sent you a picture of the um, people I had had on the show, but I didn't think about it. So this is all that from the good. writing side of my life. Oh, cool. So this is city paper. Yeah. Volume four, 42. I can't read. It's yeah. Too far is away. it up? Oh, okay. It's so up. This, 
This is the reason I sent you this one is that this is the story I'm probably most proud of. And I think I can say this because um, the paper isn't around anymore, but it paid less than anything else I've ever worked on. <laughs> um, so this was about, um, I interviewed a delegate in Maryland about this idea he had to address uh, addiction. And one of the ways he was, he was putting something forward where he wanted to have a safe injection facility in Baltimore, which I thought was kind oh, of an I interesting remember, idea. I remember this. Yeah, I, this was I this made it. big news. Yeah, I haven't followed it since I wrote the story, mm -hmm. but um, you know, there's some addiction in the, to my in my family, and to me, that sounds like okay. you know, why not try it? Because other places have done it with success. Yeah. Um, so, so hold on. when you say injection, you mean a, like booths for people to go in and, and to actually inject yeah, themselves and the like safe. It's almost like a medical facility when you mm -hmm. go in and you get a you know a drug right. in like a safe environment like where methadone. if like an overdose would happen or something there's people there who can help you and clean needles and yeah needles are being disposed of needles. exactly but it requires looking at addiction as like a disease like diabetes or you know you know something that you treat in a medical way right and that's kind of a shift in our thinking okay um, mm -hmm. i never really i don't know what happened with that here but i remember interviewing a physician who I think was, had worked, he was English. I think he had worked in the UK. And I remember asking him, what do these facilities look like? Like, what do these safe injection facilities look like? And I just got the feeling that he felt like it was such like a ridiculous question. Like, of course they look like medical facilities because it's something that he's used to. They have that there. Yeah. Oh, that's that um, in, in England, right? Yeah. yeah Overseas right. they have it. Okay. Then there, there was like a, there was one in Vancouver, I believe hmm. that has had like some pretty good success. Um, but what is so the, the goal? Reason... What's that? I'm sorry. Uh, what is the yeah. goal of it? Like, is it to to stem out the opiate epidemic, or is it to just help to facilitate it, like in well, a clean to way? to reduce deaths, like deaths right. from overdoses. Um, he also had this idea where he wanted to offer free heroin to people who were really addicted, like synthetic, uh, like methadone, uh, or not methadone, like heroin, actual heroin, which okay. would be expensive. And obviously there's a lot of people who have a lot of thoughts about that, but the idea yeah. was that that might reduce crime. Um, okay. That drugs are tied into a lot of crime. And mm. that if you had it available for free, then it might sort of help with that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, like I said, that... this is an old story. I, you know, I have not heard of anything. All right. So don't press you that. too hard. Because I have so many yeah. questions now. I'm like, well, where do you get yeah, the heroin I, from? I should is look there... back into it and find out what yeah, happened. Yeah, follow up. Stuff. I listened to that podcast for sure, that episode. Yeah. Because where do you even get it from? It's government heroin? Right. And well, you know. that's, that's something that people would have a problem with. Yeah. Right? The government is providing people with, with heroin. Or I guess you bust somebody selling it illegally and then take it. I don't know. What do I yeah, know? Well, I, well, I think that, and what he had emphasized, um, this delegate, when I talked to him, is that it would really be for like a select group of people who are really heavy users. You're talking like so. But uh, how people. do you screen that though? Twenty five people. Yeah, that's a good question. In I one city, I guess. That's I really weird. I, yeah, the people who worked for. Um, I don't want to say who I interviewed who had an opposing view because I can't remember who it was because okay. it was so long ago. Right. But uh, but they they were thinking like, how, how would we even do I, this? Like to me, how, it and sounds... They, they felt like methadone was a good, you know, that that was enough, right? I don't so, even think that's good. Yeah. I have my own personal feelings on it. Maybe I'll leave them to the side. But I think, I mean, I think I would be all for having safe places to do it. Yeah. To be cleaned, but I wouldn't supply it. I think that's just kind of going, that's, that's like get, saying everything's okay. Um, You know, it's okay to do it. So we're even going to give it to you. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I get that. The reason I thought that this story was kind of interesting is because my cousin overdosed, actually. Um, he was in treatment, like a treatment center, and right. he was in a bathroom. And I guess, I, you know, I don't know. He, he had been clean for, you know, he hadn't been using for a while. And mm. then maybe he used too much. I, I don't remember what the story That's was. That's usually what found happens, him. yeah. Nobody found him for a while. And Jeez. when I was interviewing this delegate, he actually said that's like what happens with overdoses. Sometimes people use too much. They're in their bedroom. They're in mm. the bathroom. They're by themselves. You only have so many minutes yeah. to get There's like that. What is it? The drug that you can use to like reverse overdoses. Narcan. No, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. You only have so many minutes to get that into them. Yeah. It has to kind of be immediate. It, yeah. Did he 
did your cousin pass he away? Passed. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. Thanks. Right. It um, would be different if there was a place for people to do it. I yeah. would rather see people just not do it at all. That would. Uh, obviously, that would be the better, be the better great. thing. But yeah, that would be great. But I, some people yeah. just. I just know, get worried that kind of stuff. Like morbid disease. No, I I view it as a disease 100. percent I have yeah. the history in my family as well, so I definitely view it as a disease um, myself. But I I don't know if making it an a normal thing is also good. So yeah. But yeah. these aren't now your I viewpoints. Google it and I want to is... find out what happened with this. Or, you know, <laughs> what's going on with safe injection facilities in the U.S.? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I know that there's... I've definitely seen places to drop needles off. Really? Like needle drop-off things. Yeah, and like um, you go to like I Jersey... I clean needle programs. I'm sorry, I'm talking over No, you. it's fine. Um, I, I just... I've seen them like, um, like uh, rest stops, like on the Garden State. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, stuff like that. Programs like that. Yeah. And the, like the methadone and there are things. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I guess the, the question is whether that's, you know, enough or whether something else needs to be done. Yeah. Like what's ethical, what, what makes sense, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what moral boundaries there's gray areas. Where do you get the heroin? Like there's a lot of things there. Right. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And it's, I'm sure it's expensive and you know, that there would be a lot for people to think about. So yeah. I, I have a feeling that that idea probably didn't go anywhere. But, um, yeah. I mean, you know what? I wouldn't want to discourage anybody from thinking outside the box and trying to come up with new solutions. I'm sure the person that were, was pushing for it had all the best intentions. Yeah, I think so. And I do think that thinking out of the box wouldn't be a bad thing. Well, because we with it. everything that's in place now, there still are, you know, there's a lot of people overdosing. It's mm. still a problem. So in a way, it feels like why not try something new if you could make it work? But, um, you know, I'm not I'm not the one who's implementing it. You know, I'm not there's a lot of things I don't know. So, yeah, yeah. I I don't want to make it seem like I'm uh, attacking you for it. I just, you know, I had questions. If you have about it, yeah, just talking about it. (laughs) So I know there's a couple pictures of these. Should I go to the next one? Um, Sure. Sure. I can't see it. I know you can. I'm sorry. Um, I wish I had a way. Oh, here we go. Uh, visitor entrance, no loiter, heroin injection sites. Same thing, same thing. Yeah. Mm. This citypaper.com. So this is a local. It's a local paper, but it is, it is not around anymore. Very cool, though. So we can find your, is this archive? People can, can find your work. Do you want people to find your work? Jennifer sure. Walker? Yeah, I think it's on my website, my writing website, jenniferlwalker.com. Mm-hmm. There's a link. Um, and yeah, it's under the Baltimore sun now, I believe. So yeah, definitely go take a look. Cause like I said, I wrote this a long time ago and I, you know, you worry so much as a writer about accuracy and whether you're you're saying the right things. So I would encourage people if you're interested to go check it out. And we have all your, we have your Instagram, we have your Facebook and we have your website linked in the description. So if everybody wants to go check that out, now let me see here. Um, I want to get the actual picture. Baltimore, okay. It takes a village. Tell me okay. a little bit about this. All right. So I shared this because this is one of the um, one of the reasons I started the podcast, or one of the things I really liked about podcasting. So this it takes a village story appeared in a local magazine, and it was I was interviewing women who were diagnosed with breast cancer, and they were under the age of forty. So young people, I think. You know, I forget what the statistic is, but not many young people are diagnosed. So a little bit about some of the um, the issues. But no, I'm telling you about the wrong story. It takes a village was about crowdfunding for medical expenses. This is where editing would be a good thing. You could take. I will maybe I'll do it on the YouTube. (laughs) On the YouTube, yeah. Yeah. Um, This one was about crowdfunding for medical expenses. So Mm -hmm. it was when GoFundMe was sort of a new thing. And people uh, raising money to help pay medical bills or to help in other kind of emergencies was sort of new. So for this story, and I really love writing for this magazine. Some of my favorite stories came out of writing for this local magazine. And how long did you uh, write for them? Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple years. My last story was when um, the editor I was working with left. Okay. And they got a new editor and I just never, um, I never ended up pitching anything after that. Mm -hmm. 
but um, but the word count for the these stories was usually around 1,200 words, and you would talk to like three different people. Like there would be three different smaller stories within this theme. Oh, right? that's cool. I like that. Yeah. So I had for this one woman I interviewed, she was in her early 40s, and mm -hmm. she had a, a pretty late stage cancer. She had four kids. And I met her in person. I don't meet a lot of people in person. I do a lot of phone interviews, but I met her at a Cracker Barrel. And I Cracker can remember Barrel. I, yeah, <laughs> I pulled up and she was, um, she was outside. She didn't have any hair and she didn't have a wig. Um, so she was in, you know, had been in treatment and she was very vivacious, very charismatic, mm. um, just so welcoming, gave me a big hug. We sat and we talked and she shared some really like personal, personal things. She got emotional at one point. Um, and I just, I always wondered, did I do her story justice because right. I only had 400 words and that's nothing against the magazine at all. You're working in print. You only have so much space. Um, but I, I did wonder, I was only focusing on a very like small part of her life, how she was raising money mm. to help with her cancer treatments. And I just felt like she had so much more to say, and it's kind of like nagged at me. Um, maybe it's something that will come up in the future. For you to write Maybe. about the, the the cool thing about podcasting is that you have the space yeah. to kind of like connect it right that's like a good I point talk to somebody and i have all that you know i have as much space as i want really and to, it's a blank canvas yeah so it's a blank canvas no editor I like I can, no yeah no editor though i uh nothing against editors they they really help a lot i've sure. learned a lot from them for sure but, but there's um, no, nothing stopping you from doing what you would like to do yeah it can be really fun to work within small word counts often mm. i write stories that have small word counts because it's like a puzzle you have to figure out the most important thing that somebody right. said to you probably makes a good writer thing. yeah and how to make it how to make it work within a small amount of mm -hmm. space but it's also nice to have the space of the podcast to just more fully tell you know, an aspect of somebody's career story in my case, since that's what I focus on. Now, did you go to school for writing? I did. Well, I, my undergrad was in English mm. and my graduate degree is in nonfiction writing. Oh, cool. Do you have any, yeah. are you an author? Do you have anything out that's like fiction or like Only a book? Only a travel Novel? book. Only a travel book. The really? Moon Baltimore Guide to Baltimore City. I oh, on. so I had that up. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, that was That's a second cool. edition. So when you write these, at least with this particular company, when you write travel books, mm -hmm. you if you do a second edition or later, you get all the copy from the first edition that you can use. So I think the statistic oh. is you probably write 50% of the book because some of the stuff is the same. Um, right, you just update it as new things come and go. You update it, yeah. But that was a fun experience because we, uh, my husband and I, we had one kid at that point, And it really like, because I was doing research for the book, it really forced us to kind of go out, find some different places in Baltimore. Oh, that's cool. Um, it was fun. It's different than anything I've done before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. Uh, do you plan on writing a novel or anything? Is that ever? I don't. No. No. I mean, I would never, I don't think I would ever write fiction. Yeah. Um, I just don't think that's my strength. And I really, I really do like talking to people and hearing their story. And well, you're really well to... spoken. Oh, thank you. So it, really it nice. makes it really easy to do this. So I appreciate that. Oh yeah, sure. No, you're, mm. you're great at um, keeping the conversation going. Thank you. Yeah, I try. Really yeah. Sometimes I'm a little, t I'm too uh, rebunctious, you know, I just <laughs> want to ask like a thousand questions. So I, I everybody, try to, everybody does. That. I do. I do that too. Mm. When I'm interviewing. Like people. right now I just derailed you and everybody's going to hit me up later and be like, I wish you would just let her finish. That's what happened. It's hard to know. It's hard mm -hmm. to know when the, when somebody's done and when you can jump in. And yeah. I, I mm -hmm. do that too. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't write nonfiction. You really enjoyed the actual interview process. and I do. And it's funny because I am such... I'm such an introvert. Like if you mm. met me in, in real life, like I am not great at real life conversations, you know, I kind of okay. like shy away from it, but, um, but I really do like to learn about people. Mm. And, and if you're interviewing people, you can go a little bit deeper than like kind of the small talk, casual stuff. conversation. Um, yeah. So, so I like that. It's, it's a good way for me to get to talk to people and learn about people. Well, stuff. that's what we like doing here. You know, we like to just kind of dive in a little bit and, and learn yeah no you yeah know. it's no it's great for sure no and i wouldn't have expected you to say you like you don't like normal conversation although not that you don't like normal conversation but you're more of like yeah. a extrovert or introvert 
Yeah, a little bit, a little bit more of like a to myself yeah. like, kind of person. I'm okay with one on one stuff, but like if uh, if there were. But I'm like, the same way. You're the and there's way, like really? 50, if, that. Well, if I walk into a room, there's like 50 people, and I'm not on the stage playing music. I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, it's either. so I'm weird. In the bathroom or something. <laughs> but if I'm on a stage playing music, I want a thousand people there. It doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I enjoy it. So it's just weird. Yeah, that's um, your element, I guess. I just how that works. Yeah, I don't like people. You know, I <laughs> just I don't want to. I don't want to talk about the weather. <laughs> you know, if everybody just played by the rules, like, hey, how you doing? All right. I'm going to stick with my people, you know, but there's, I don't know. I'm just doing a bit now. Yeah. I it is forced... funny how that you can go on. I'm sorry. It is mm -hmm. funny how you can go on stage and play. I sort of feel like, like I can stand up and give speeches and stuff. Like my mom is really social and good at talking to people, but she, she would never want to give a speech. I'm it's not weird as good that at way. talking to people, but I can stand up and say something I prepared. That doesn't bother me as much. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty good at talking to people. I like talking to people, but I also don't. And it's like, um, you know, it has to be very selective. Like, I'm definitely not the person that wants to go out every night and meet 50 people every night. Yeah. You know, but when I'm when the social occasion arises, I'm pretty good at introducing myself and, you know, talking that's to people good. and you doing that stuff. I have to. I force myself to. It's like that's an important skill you should have. Yeah. No, uh, I think I think that's true. I think you kind of I think you do have to force it to a certain extent. I try yeah. to force it sometimes. And definitely if I can get somebody one on one, I think that is it's the way better, better time to shine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think what I'm saying is though, I think a lot of people have similar characteristics as far as that and it we kind of excel now at this point. Maybe because we watch people. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just speaking for you, but I know like I do a lot of people watching and like I like to watch social interactions so maybe it's i get to sit yeah. there you know like the monday monday quarterback monday quarterbacking kind of oh yeah if that makes yeah. sense I, don't watch, I know i guess i don't watch social interactions as closely mm -hmm. but i should because you probably can learn a lot from that yeah i love it there's something about it i i don't know i just like watching people have social yeah. Have you Thanks. ever seen like a really uh, like a conversation that really sticks out to you, like a social interaction that was like uh, really impactful? I'm <laughs> sure there's a bunch of stories, but you know, it's funny you say that because that comedian Mike Falzone that I was talking about, he had yeah. a weekly bit that he would do on his YouTube called Real Conversations I Heard Strangers Have This Week. You know, <laughs> and it was great because he would just talk about hearing a couple at the grocery store or whatever, you know. How does he do that? Does he get like close enough, like follow them around? Kind right. Of? It like, makes you think like, like the whole thing. just start acting like you're shopping for whatever's down that aisle and just follow them around <laughs> the whole store. Cause you just, you want to finish the conversation. Now when I'm at the store, I'm be kind of looking around in case anybody's uh, getting something together for YouTube or whatever. <laughs> there was one time some guy bugged out about cabbage, but that doesn't really count. But I, that's stuck with me. He literally was just yelling down the alleyway with a box of pasta yelling about cabbage. And I was like, all right. But that doesn't, oh. that's not the same thing. But like it wasn't any good, the cabbage? Or... I don't know. I should have followed Something him to find him, out. Huh? I should have followed him to figure out if he ever found the cabbage or not. But he was bugging. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. Anytime you hear somebody passionate about cabbage, I can see how that would stick with you. Yeah. Um, so that's actually a good thing. Do you have any contacts or would like to talk to maybe like farmers and stuff like that? They're in business right now or like, um, cause I, I asked because you talked about, and maybe you could explain a little bit more. You kind of have like a membership. It's like a farmer's market kind of deal where like you paid X amount and then uh, yeah. you would get fruit or vegetables. Yeah. So I, um, we haven't done this in a, in a while, but we mm -hmm. had a membership to a CSA, like the community CSA. supported agriculture. So you pay a certain amount of money at the beginning of the growing season. And then mm -hmm. every week you go and you pick up whatever, you know, they have available. You get like four to eight items. Um, sometimes you get to choose, sometimes you don't, but you're kind of buying into the farm so that right. if there's extreme weather or anything like that, then you're helping them to keep going. If mm. you know, the crop isn't like where it should be. Whenever mm. I've been a member of the CSA though, I, I felt like we always got ample amounts of food every week. I don't remember. You, you know. mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it, it always worked out fine. Um, yeah. Talking to farmers would be interesting. I used to work on a farm when I was a kid, my uncle, really? 
um, had a farm. I don't, I don't think he, I don't think he has it anymore, but I used to pick vegetables. It's like, uh, okay. one of my early jobs, pick the peppers and the tomatoes and the squash. Right. And, um, yeah, you felt, you felt like you did some hard work at the end of the day, which sure. is cool. Um, but it would be interesting to talk to a farmer now about what's going on. Maybe I'll look into that. Cause one of my big things is like, I'm trying to get people and it, it's, it's kind of like a catch 22 because it's like the, the people I want are really busy saving their business, but mm -hmm. I really want them on the show because I want their experiences during the whole pandy and everything. It's like the pandemic. It's like, uh, yeah. I would love to get them on, but I understand that they are busy. So, um, I know it's been suggested that there's been a couple of people that have lost their business that kind of want to talk about it, but it's such like a touchy subject. I don't know. I rather have positive vibes on things, but at the same time, you got to kind of hear both sides of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hard one because I can see how it, you know, maybe it's too fresh too. If people have like just lost their business yeah, and don't... they don't know what's next. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess I would say, you know, you could just reach out to a lot of different people and maybe and somebody see. will, will it's, come on. It's good advertisement as well. You know? Yeah. And it's the impact though, is what I'm curious about is like, cause I don't know, I've been working this whole time. Yeah. In fact, my business, you know, the, the company I work for deals in live streaming stuff. So it's kind of like the perfect storm almost. It's kind of weird. I hate to say it. It's not mm -hmm. to take away from anybody suffering or lost ones or anything, but this has kind of been really great. Uh, you know, I, and I, please don't I take mean, it out of context, just, but no, no, that's just, that's yeah. Definitely. If mm. you're in a digital, you know, sort of field, it probably would be better. Yeah. And so I just been working. So really this whole thing has been an inconvenience for me, but I know there's people that have lost their livelihoods and family yeah. members and stuff. So it's, it's a touchy subject. No, for sure. Um, I, I agree. I have also kind of wanted to focus on more positive mm -hmm. stories, I guess, and to have listeners sort of leave feeling, I don't love the word inspired, but, you know, feeling like they have like a little bit of like push to keep going with, um, with their business or their uh, whatever projects they're working on. So I haven't thought of talking to anybody who has lost a business, but hasn't moved on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think once people have moved on to the next thing and they can talk about the bit, you know, losing a business in the past sense, but how they bounce back from it, that, um, that that can be really helpful and like inspiring for people. It's tough when you're in that space of just having, I mean, I already said this, but having it just happen. Yeah. I think um, it's just, you come from the same spot that I'm coming from. Like I want, knowledge i want to learn and i want my viewers to have something to learn about so it's really coming from a space of like i just don't know and i want to know about it but yeah. maybe when they bounce back that's the time to get them on i think that's a good point yeah i mean it depends on like it depends on you know what you're looking for right i mean you yeah. said you were looking for more positive things so yeah maybe yeah i mean maybe i was trying to get doctors on idea. and i had one or two that said they would do it but they were oh, like yeah. studying also working like 20 hours, uh, you know, so it was like, all right, you know, maybe in the future. Yeah. I think in the medical field, everybody's so is tough, like so busy, but I want to know just the more. emotional. I'm, I'm sorry. What? I'm selfish. I want to know, I want to learn, I know. you know, I so know, that's the I whole, know. that's the whole I know. part it's, of it. It's tough. I mean that eventually it, I mean, somebody has got to want to talk, right? It's just finding the right person, the person who has the time mm -hmm. and that just, can take a while sometimes maybe one of our lovely viewers here will will know somebody that would love to share their experiences yeah and they'll know. reach out you know totally come out of that <laughs> yeah yeah some of the um people i've had on the show have been like adam and ash adam and ashley ellenbach awesome episode. came as a recommendation from mercedes who was in episode three i think that's the best way to find people sometimes because obviously how I found gives you. you an in you know a name you can drop yeah, Oops. I found, so I was talking to Chris Yee and I was like, Hey man, I really need, um, some interesting people. And the first person you brought up was you and here wow, we are. Oh, that's good. That's nice to hear. Yeah. Ooh. And maybe once I read Adam's book, you can help me get it in and I oh, could yeah. interview him yeah, or sure. have him on the show. I should say. Yeah. I bet he'd be great. He's really, um, he's really well-spoken and passionate about what he does and yeah, you can tell. And that's the cool thing about just having the audio is like you're really it's you're more it's more intense to listen to, I guess. If that's the right word. 
uh, it's more rich. So it's like you really hear the nuances in people's voice and how they say things. Right. Yeah, that's what I like about it. You hear what, what they emphasize and when their passion comes through. Mm -hmm. and that's that's the great part of audio, I think. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm debating about how to do another series where maybe it's just audio after listening to your stuff. But I got to be honest, I don't think I'm the type. I might not be the type. Yeah, I mean, I maybe I think everybody not. has maybe, their maybe niche. You off of the, maybe you feed off of the video and like having the face-to-faces. Yeah, I, maybe there's something yeah. about it, more so, more cues with the visual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? I can see that for sure. So if you're going to do a le uh, episode 11 and you're going to do like a tips and kind of like a wrap up, does that mean mm -hmm. season one, so to speak, is done? Yeah, that's season. I'm going to call that season one. Okay. Season one was really about, um, I don't think I had a lot of structure in season one. I was just sort of uh, getting in touch with people I thought were interesting cool. and asking them to come on the show. Um, in season two, what I'm going to try to do is themed episodes. Cool. So um, like for September, I interviewed a couple of, I'm going a little bit off topic here. I interviewed a couple of full-time working parents about um, sort of what's been going on for them with COVID and how they've balanced everything that shifting to working from home, having to balance the kids' schoolwork mm. and hopefully gives people some ideas on how to balance that or at least some commiseration. Right, right, right. Um, no, the two people I've talked to have not had like terrible stories at all. It seemed like they managed it pretty well, but cool. I, it's nice to hear about other people's experiences. Yeah. And then, um, you know, from there, I haven't really planned it out yet, but I'd like to get two. If I'm only doing one episode a month, it would be nice to have two guests on an episode. Just on to have, a episode. That's yeah, cool. just to have two different perspectives under the same topic. But I like right. having them on the same show so you can draw comparisons or contrast or whatever. Yeah, so like, that's my goal for the next season. Like someone, maybe both are teachers, but they teach different things, or they're different ways of doing it, or maybe mm -hmm. opposites or whatever. I guess. Yeah, their their experience could be very different too. Yeah. So it's nice to kind of hear two sides under the same umbrella. Topic, yeah, I think I really like your show. Um, again, it's very easy to digest. It's called "We Built This Life." So awesome! Yeah, I'm wa I'm so excited much. for season two. Um, especially if yeah. you're going to do more production, it sounds like if it's going to be once a month, sounds like you're really going to go all in for each episode. Yeah. Try to make each episode like, like pretty good. I've always really liked, um, uh, what is the NPR, uh, this American life, the, the show on this American life. I've listened to that mm -hmm. to kind of see, they use like different music all the time to tell stories. Yeah. And they, um, there was a cool even... story. Uh, some guy that lived in the woods. Uh, man, I really wish I knew more about it, but I, I like NPR. I, uh, yeah, they sent someone to go. This guy just lives in the woods, oh, um, wow. and he would just make like bee. He had like beeswax and all this stuff. But it was like on a radio show. Wow, cool. Yeah, it's really yeah. interesting to listen to the NPR shows because mm -hmm. they, you know, they it's their it's their profession, so they're really great at putting out radio and just to hear how they do it and how they use music. And, yeah. Um, would you, you know, compare the same? It. Would you compare an audio podcast to a radio show? Like, uh, compare it to the same, yeah. or do you think it's different? It feels similar to me. Um, I mean, if you're thinking about like old school radio, where you have right. like a like a disc jockey, and kind of the goal is more to play music, maybe maybe not, maybe, right? And maybe like more a news radio program or something like that. Yeah. It it feels a little bit similar to me. What do you think? Well, I, I mean, from my personal experience, I don't think it's the same. Yeah. And I thought it was funny because I asked you what you thought about um, this new layout that I'm working on. You're like, oh, it seems like the news. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know when they have the screen behind them and yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. talking to somebody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like I'm predicting the we weather. We have different experiences. You're coming from... Yeah. Um, but I do think there is a difference between like classical media like traditional mm -hmm. media and like the new modern media. Yeah, I think, what um, different? well, one, when you're, when you're I, I, for me personally, like I choose what I digest. So like, I'm not mm -hmm. putting on Fox or, or NBC or any of these places and just waiting for stuff to come. Like That's I'm constantly point. choosing what I want. Is it a Joe Rogan podcast? Is it a bad friends podcast? Is it, Bill Burr answering fan mail. Is it some Star Wars thing? You know, is it a gear review? 
So I'm still digesting media, but I'm choosing exactly what it is for the most part. Yeah, that's a good point. That is different because you're right. In old school radio, you couldn't pick. You got, you're just waiting. You know, in your car and whatever came on mm. is what came on. But now you can yeah. choose what you're interested in. And that's I think really there's way more benefits of being able to pick and choose. But I do think it adds, and this might be an abstract way of thinking, but maybe it adds a little bit to the diversiveness of all these different groups. Like I belong to this group and this group and this group. Because like you used to just put on the, the, the old radio there and sit around and everybody in America would be listening to the same station, mm -hmm. listening to the same thing. And then you would go and talk about it the next day with your coworkers or at school. And it's like everybody had the same topics. Now it's like I'm in this thing and I make a reference and only you and me know about it. And it's like we're mm -hmm. so many splinter cell groups of like pop media or whatever it is of just media. Yeah, that's another good point. I guess I haven't thought about this too deeply. Yeah, in the in the old days you only had so many options for things that you could consume. Right. And now it's limitless. There's so too much. much out there. What do they say? A thousand channels, nothing to watch. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, right. like There's so many options it seems like they're every day they're coming out with a new like streaming service or yeah so that's another thing fun. too all the different packages everything's very segregated as much as it is open if that makes yeah. any sense it's a very yeah. much a contradiction but i'll stick the with choice it. is that there is like so much choice as well i think that the, what do they say there's like thousands of podcasts out there i don't know what the number is oh yeah for sure and that's just podcasts hmm and that's just podcasts. That's just podcasts, right? That's just podcasts. And so, then, you know, not even all the YouTube channels and like, you know, whatever else there is. I mean, think about the people that are just streaming themselves in a Ford somewhere in the forest making a sword. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. but people watch it. People like it. Yeah, it's kind of crazy today because really anybody can be in any kind of media, right? Anybody who wants to make a video can make a video. Anybody who wants to make a podcast. This is it. Can, you can even just use your internal microphone if you wanted to right? and just get up and start mm -hmm. talking and you have one. So. But this is like why I, I harp on like having good quality or at least yeah. I, what I would hope to be good quality. I, I strive for it. Yeah. Because like right now we have about 15 people watching. Which is, oh, there he is. You hear him? I heard it. I mm -hmm. heard it. It's the same guy. Just drives around. There he goes. Does, it, does he uh, make that noise on every show? Do you hear him driving every Sometimes. Show? So, uh, I had Brian Kroll on from My Son the Bum. He's a global mm -hmm. musician that has a bunch of stuff on radio and stuff. And he deals in like the human, like, you know, uh, quitting coffee. He made a song about that, but then also like texting while driving and like, or uh, maybe wanting to go a little crazy because you're at your like your in laws for like uh, Christmas and you're just tired of it, you know? So he, he kind of picks on these things that no one really talks about. Um, but it, we we played a show, his music video, it's all stop clay animation. Pretty cool. Uh, it was like two weeks ago we did that show. But it was about texting while driving, about how these people crash because you're both texting and driving. Yeah. And we end it, and then this guy drives like that. And it was like, oh, how perfect is that? Look at that. Right at the end, you got that noise. Mm -hmm. yeah. There he you goes. You timed it better. <laughs> yeah, right? Um. I he also interrupted everything. So let's give some shout outs maybe. Okay. If that's right with you. Yeah, sure. We have Silver Fox. Thanks uh for tuning in, VIP member. We got Gary Patan. We got you on next week. Excited to have you on. Ellen Hurst says hello. Silver Fox says hello. Thanks for tuning in. We got Lee, Brent Hertz, and Chris Yee. Thank you guys for watching. Rich Patan's on. And let's see, Chris Yee says Learning so much about my sister-in-law. I didn't know before. Good job, Jen. And then he also shared. Thank you for sharing. He says, I'm going to do that now. Follow people at the store and eavesdrop on interesting people. New comic, Alex. Oh, I think he's saying he's going to make a comic about eavesdropping. Oh, I think that's that. awesome. Good idea. <laughs> Have you seen all the posts he's been making about um, his artwork for comics and stuff? I have. I've seen he's been yeah. going through um, some of his old stuff, I thought. Right. And yeah. He's been showing some of his old work. That's really cool. And I just want to like, I don't know how to get him to just make a new comic. I don't know. I, just I, suggest like, it. And maybe he'll be. He'll I be think inspired. I do. I'm like, you should do anime. <laughs> you should do this. And I'm like, come on, man. I would buy it. I subscribe. 
Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Me too. I would too. I think it's interesting what he said too about um, like how you can learn so much about people that, you know, are family members or friends just you don't from even like know. listening into their interview. I have found that when I have interviewed friends, like, like I never knew this about you. It's really cool to be able to go deeper. That's, and again, that's why I want to have these conversations. Like I had that guy C4 on from Flak Jacket and I've known him for years now. I had no idea he was an art teacher. See, see, and, and then it just comes out. And that's like a big part of his life. And like, that's, yeah. that's the whole thing. It's like so simple, but like, wow, that's like, you spend a lot of your time doing that. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then he can tell you more about that. I know. I really, I don't know if I have, I mean, I knew, I think I knew what all of my friends like have done for work or whatever, but just recently for this episode about moms who are working full time and balancing kids and work and everything that I'm going to do soon. I talked to somebody who I haven't seen probably since I was, I don't know Well, I ran into her like a little bit later in life, but she mm. was a friend from when I was like eight years old. That's awesome. So it was really cool to catch up. I saw my first concert with her, Debbie Gibson. So we were reminiscing about that. Cool. And, um, yeah. It's, it's, it, I really, you can learn so much about people who are in your life by actually like bringing them on and asking them questions. Yeah. Especially if you ask the right questions, right? Yes. Right. And it's right like questions that get some talking. It's like people ask, well, what's your podcast about? I'm like, uh, it's just, just like imagine two strangers or two friends sitting there and just talking for a couple hours. They're like, well, I don't understand. It's like, no, but like, it's a long form conversation. Like nobody does this anymore. I mean, like, honestly, when's the last time you sat and talked to someone for that long? I mean, you do interviews and stuff. So all the time. Yeah. But, but not, but they're shorter. So that, I mean, yeah, that's a good point. The interviews are really just like, especially for interviews I do like for bulletin points writing. Yeah. Like what questions do I need to put this story together? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm often not sharing that much about myself. Yeah. So they aren't really like conversations. I would say. I would um, always want it to feel like a conversation, not an interview. I f yeah. just because it's, it's so long, a long form. But oh I yeah. Oh yeah. For that amount of time, you need a back and forth and the dialogue mm -hmm. helps. I really liked, yeah. um, and I keep bringing up the same episode, episode six. But it was nice to have Adam and Ashley on yeah. together because then I could get the dialogue going between them. They played well off each other there. too. Yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed it. I'm going to finish it um, probably later today or tomorrow. Cool. Oh, mm -hmm. someone's going up. Oh, you can hear it. That's the, the elevator. elevator in my yeah. building, which is very, very loud. Mm -hmm. It's all <laughs> it good. kind of, um, you can feel it a little bit. Like it kind of shakes the ground a little Does bit. Does it? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. It must be right there. Yeah, we are. We're right near it. Um, so have you ever, is there anything you scrapped? Or maybe you don't want to talk about that, but like it, it's no. never been like, you know what, this isn't enough or this isn't what I thought it was going to be. No, I, I don't think I would ever scrap it. If somebody like gave me their time to come mm. on and talk. It's important, and right? Story, I'm going to make something of it. Cool. You know? and, I, and like I said, I think everybody has interesting things to say. Yeah. Um, so I, I can't, I can't think of a time when I would ever want to scrap something. I probably always put together something and put it out. Cause, uh, so something I've been kicking around, it's just like a funny thought I've had. Cause I like to do these little bits that never go anywhere in my brain, you know, but yeah. it's like all the guests, all the people that I would really like to talk to that honestly, like, or just friends or whoever, where it would be like a 15 minute conversation. There wouldn't be anything left. Maybe for like a season final, I just get like 30 of those people on. Yeah. And we just kind of like go through like, real quick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Cause you work that out technically, like having somebody come on and switching to somebody else. Yeah, it'd be difficult, but it would be something I'd be interested in doing. I, I, I kick it around. That'd be kind of cool. Would you, would you talk to them each about the same thing? Like get different what I would do on something? Is ask them to come up with the one thing that they, they would want to talk about. Oh, okay. And have it be a surprise for me. Yeah. Right. And then you I, can play off of it. You know, yeah. So I begin like 30 subjects thrown at me and I just have to kind of like duck and weave and like kind of do my thing, you know, it's a good exercise for you as the host, a good exercise. <laughs> yeah. Well, plus it makes them feel prepared too. So if you only get 15 minutes, like that's a lot of pressure, especially if you don't come on and do this stuff. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I feel like, it's like the, like the writing to a short word count thing. You really have to hone in on what you want to say and what you want to talk about. Yeah, There's not and, a lot of room for tangents. Right. So as soon as someone comes on, I try to derail them and go to the next person. So I can just keep it going. 
<laughs> 15 minutes next <laughs> yeah 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 i don't know it's just something i thought about especially like when you have friends and they're like oh why well, do this and it's like all right but are you really doing it or are you just kind of doing it and it's like I, I i would love for you to come on the show i love talking to you but do you really have uh, it's hard because it sounds kind of almost mean but it's like do you really have substance there to come on so maybe i could yeah. just grab 30 of those types of people and just throw them on i think that'd be cool to try something like different like that and then yeah. you would maybe also get an idea of whether you know they could come on for a longer episode right, right? maybe like, someone really stand more, out maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's how i should do all maybe i should do that at the start of the season yeah. Get 30 <laughs> potential guests. From... Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> we'll see. I, I don't really know about the idea of um I guess I could structure it in seasons, right? Cuz yeah. I do it once a week, but I I just I don't know. I'm just going to keep going. I mean, you decide. I mean, what's to yeah. say what a season is? I just decided that well, my goal the whole time was to reach 10 episodes, right? Yeah. I did not have a goal beyond that. Yeah. I was just shooting for 10 episodes and then I was going to see what happened next. So because I had that goal in my mind, I just decided that's my season. Love now it. I'm going to move on to the next goal. <laughs> well, I love that you did 10 episodes. That's season one, but then you're doing a season finale or yeah, sum up on like 11 <laughs> and then on 12. It's episode, you know, yep, that's the start. start. On to I, the next thing. That's like kind of it. the great thing about this format. You can kind of switch it up. I told you yeah. I might change my music. I, you know, I don't know. Yep. It's all open. Well, um, you have to, right? You have to update things. I don't know. Yeah, you have to update things, like have a different soundtrack for every season mm -hmm. or something. Might be kind of fun. Yeah, and like, I actually, I have Chris Yee working um, feverishly on everything. Custom logo, everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm waiting on he's, it. He's mm -hmm. really good at that stuff. That's oh, I can't wait to get my hands on it. We're going to have a uh, little plug here for our merch. Although it might be getting too cold for some people. We'll have tank tops. Not too late. You can buy them for next year. Yeah. I like a tank a top. Mm -hmm. And an extra large mouse pad. So if you have a computer desk, <laughs> if you would like to, you know. But um, you know what, Jen? I really appreciate you coming on. I feel like I've learned a lot. I'm uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do in the future here, and and I can't wait to get you back on. Thank you so much for having me. This was really this was really really fun. Oh. You're great at the interviewing thing for sure. It's a conversation, but thank you. I'll take I'm sorry. it. I'm sorry. No conversation, worries. Conversation. It's okay. No, I I really appreciate it because I always get a little nervous when I have people that are been doing it longer or been in it, and you're just so well spoken. So I'm so happy to have you on and to have had the conversation. Yeah, thank you so much. Maybe you'll come on my podcast sometime. We can do it the other way around. Hey, maybe. <laughs> it is a business. Uh, yeah. Um, is there anything you'd like to tell the people before we, we hang up here? I don't think so. Just I would love if everybody tuned in to, to season two. Um, I'm really excited about it. And if anybody is listening and an entrepreneur or a side hustler or does any kind of work on, on their own and you want to come on the show, I'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, like Alex said, my Facebook and my Instagram are, are linked up. So send me a message. And I encourage everybody to go follow and listen and share with your friends. And guess what? Even if you don't like it, you know someone that will. So share it with them. Right? Good way to look at it. Yes. It's a good way to look at <laughs> it. And uh, Jen, next week we have Gary Patan on. He owns videoguys.com. This is the live streaming uh, platform. They sell hardware and software solutions and all that stuff. But um, he's also into education and economics and kind of a genius. And yeah. he comes from a family business. They've been in business for 35 plus years. Nice. So maybe if you like the conversation we have, maybe you can get him on the show. Maybe we can help you with that. That'd be awesome. I will definitely tune in. I like the idea of a family business. I haven't had anybody on who has a family business. Yeah, it cool. started with um, the mom in their apartment. And now the three brothers have it. Wow, cool. It's really so it grew cool. From this tiny operation into something kind of big, it sounds like. Uh, definitely big, yes. So <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to that conversation. But Jen, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Again, guys, go follow her. Share her work. Um, I've learned a lot. I really like episode, was it episode seven? Six. Yeah, well, is Adam, that the Adam, mm -hmm. the Adam Ellenboss? Six. I like yes. that one. Uh, so far, my favorites are that one and episode eight, where you go through how you manage your waste. 
Yeah, definitely and, go on there for some good ideas, I hope. And mm-hmm. I'm going to tune into episode nine, I believe, which is how you talk about tips and ways to social distance. Oh, yeah. Episode episode nine's with my husband, actually. And he's, cool. um, you know, Chris's brother. Mm-hmm. And he uh, talks about him being a painter. And oh, I thought, of, okay, go ahead. Sorry, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, and sort of um, how he, he was trying to be a full-time painter for mm-hmm. a while, and he found that that really wasn't the best fit for him and now he works full time and um, tries to squeeze in like you know he's a serious artist and he does that kind of on the side so he talks a little bit about that um yeah it was fun talking to my husband so we get that dialogue that must have been interesting yeah yeah it was cool it was easy to set up we did the interview at the uh kitchen table here and i was uh, my son our youngest um Mm -hmm. didn't sleep on his own then so i was holding the baby while we were doing the interview that's cool yeah awesome make it it work wholesome (laughs) Was there an episode you came out talking about social distancing? Because in episode, I'm getting confused now. In episode eight, I think it was, where you talked about your waste management. Yeah, yeah. You, and nine, I might have. I might have talked a little bit about You mentioned an like. uh, episode coming out about social distancing. I don't know if, yeah. if it came I, out. No, I never. It didn't come out. about right. ideas that I scrapped. I never did that. I did start filming an I episode found it. about, um, yeah, this was it, about like, how I was surviving during mm-hmm. COVID-19 and the kids and everything. And I was recording it. I was just like, oh, this is so boring. Right. I, can't, I can't put this up. And so I transitioned it into interviewing some other moms so I could bring their stories on. Right. Okay, maybe cool. Maybe I'll talk about myself too. I'm sure you'll get on there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Jen, I really right. appreciate it. Thanks, Have Alex. a great Sunday. Yeah, you too. Thank this you. This was so fun. <laughs> it was really fun. I really appreciate it. It was very informative. Um, and I'm going to look you up a little bit more and learn a little bit more about you. And we love to get you in maybe at one point in the studio. Who knows? Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Who knows? All we right. might, uh, might be up in long Island visiting Chris at some point. There you go. Maybe <laughs> we get both of you guys in. Yeah. That'd be fun. Cool. Awesome. Have a great night. Um, I'm just going to address the people. So it's up to you. You can stay on the line or, or hang up. No hard feelings. Okay. Um, sure. I'll listen to you address the people. Why oh, not? <laughs> pressure. Has it been at it? But no problem. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Well, guys, that's another episode done. Uh, I had a really good time um, learning a little bit about Jennifer Walker and her work. And um, guys, next week we have Gary Batan. He's the owner of VideoGuys.com. He's been on education boards here on Long Island. He's... Uh, really into economics obviously and um yeah it's gonna be a really good conversation he sponsored the channel before we did uh chris yee's band megahertz we've had them live stream uh to raise money for local bars so um yeah it's gonna be a good conversation and again i appreciate all the support guys buying the merch it goes a long way but you know what goes further liking and sharing with your friends and uh yeah tuning in and you guys have done that so thank you very much and uh, be on the lookout for new artwork. And also the Lee and Me podcast hopefully will be releasing their episode soon. I know I keep teasing it, but things keep changing. Um, and yeah, be on the lookout for that. And that's really all I got. I think I'm going to play us out with um, a little commercial that my father made for the merch. And then, uh, and then we'll say uh, have a good Sunday. So that's it. All right. Hey guys, how you doing? Silver Fox here. How you guys doing in this crazy, crazy world we're living in today? You know, with everything that's going on, you know, it's pretty dreary. But we do have some good entertainment on Sundays at 2 p.m. on Voodoo Water TV. Please join us every Sunday at 2 p.m. on Voodoo Water TV. It's a podcast. Uh, hosted by Alexander Fox. And while you enjoy enjoying the show, where we have uh, really good people and, and diverse uh, entertainers, please click on the merch button and uh, check it out. Check out all our merch. And uh, some of the stuff that we have is, uh, if, you, if you have a, uh, a computer desk and you need a new, a new mouse pad, uh, we, have, we have one for you. It's very nice quality, thick, and uh, with our logo, Voodoo Water TV, right? Um, 
we we have speakers. You can decorate your your laptop. You can decorate your bumper. You can decorate anything you want, and and we'll show our logo of uh, Voodoo Water TV, right? Don't forget the show is at 2 p.m. on Sundays, every Sunday on Voodoo Water TV. And for those chilly days, chilly nights, and mornings, we have we have a beautiful hoodie that has our logo. Voodoo Water TV, wow. right for for the, our shows on on Sundays at 2 p.m. And we have a beautiful mug. How does it um? How does it work? You know when you having your coffee, your tea, and uh, it has our logo, Voodoo Water TV. So while you're enjoying the show, please, you know, click click on the merch, select some of the stuff. And we also have these, these cool shirts with our logo <clears throat> of uh, Voodoo Water TV, right? For the, our shows on Sundays, every Sunday at 2 p.m. with our host, Alexander Fox. So, get back to the show and enjoy the rest of it. It's the first